today we will be retelling the story of Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Our story begins in Langley during a debrief of an op gone bad. CIA Director Daniel Livingston is grilling Troy Marshall for disobeying a direct order to stand down given by CIA Operations Specialist Jane Harrow. Both Jane and Frank Woods are there as Woods is still active within the CIA and a partner and mentor of Marshall. Livingston is agitated with the events that happened in Q8, the op in question. Marshall retails the events. We were in position near the Iraq-Kuwait border. Small team, me, Harrow, and Case. Lowry is ahead of schedule. Whoever he's meeting won't wait around for long. No, not if it's a smuggler. I'm sure Lowry has paid top dollar to get himself out of the Middle East. Guess it doesn't really matter. He's coming with us. Outlaw 42, we've got our eyes on the convoy. Paying the target, over. Roger, ground. Target confirmed. Waiting on your go. Over. Do it. Outlaw 42, you're clear to engage. Out. Let's go get him. Copy, ground. Engaging it out. Here comes the traffic jam. Jane, Marshall, and Case apprehend the target, Alawani, who seems confused as he said that he had a deal in place with the CIA. Before he can reveal any more information, they are interrupted by a small army of Pantheon operators. The name Pantheon rattles Case's mind for a split second, and the team decide that they need to move before Pantheon gets a whiff of them. As they try to find an exfil point, Marshall disobeys an order to not engage from Jane Harrow, leading to a quick firefight against the paramilitary group. As they make it to safety, they are ambushed by a rogue CIA operative. Everyone all right? Is this your... No, 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 no! Adler! Stand down! <laughs> Wait till Woods gets a load of this. Goddamn Russell Adler. CIA traitor. He been on the run, what, 10 months? Marshall, huh? Woods' new project. You can ease up, son. I'm all done here. Jane? You just killed a high-value target in cold blood and put our national security at risk. Halawi well, can't fall into the Pantheon's hands or Langley's. The CIA is compromised, but it's not me. I'm just the fall guy. You expect us to believe that? Hey, Jane, you want to tape his mouth shut for me? Yes. Wait, I got a message for Woods. Oh, yeah? Tell him Bishop takes Brooke. The hell's that supposed to mean? Time to go. After this, we return back to the debrief, and Woods denies knowing what the message from Adler meant. Here we also learn that the CIA believed the mole in Panama who got Mason and Hudson killed was Russell Adler, and that is why he has been fleeing for some time now. Marshall and his team along with Woods would be suspended by Livingston. A few minutes later, we would see Marshall meet with Jane in her office, and then we find out that the two have been romantically involved for some time. Not all reminders need to be scars. Why are we here, Harrow? Because you know something? Care to tell me what it is you're up to? Me and the kids just need some time away. You know, take a little trip. Reflect a little. Look, I can cover your asses on my end best I can. But if things go sideways again, you're on your own. Copy that. Oh, you want? One, yeah. Try a dozen. Do me a favor, Troy. Don't get yourself killed. I'll see what I can do. And 
And three days later, Woods took Marshall and Case to the Black Sea, where he and Adler stumbled upon an old KGB safe house 15 years earlier. Woods did in fact know what the message from Adler meant, and Woods believed that Adler must have found something to reveal who was behind Pantheon, as intel suggests that Adler was looking into the group before he went MIA. After investigating the Rook, the three find leads to an assassin for hire that Adler was looking to contract. The assassin's name is Sevari Dumas, and she agreed to meet with Case in Avalon, while Marshall looks for Felix Newman, an ex-KGB soldier whose current location is in Munich. Woods believes that Felix can find out exactly where the CIA has moved Russell Adler. A few hours later, we find Case on the hunt for a guild member named Yannick, who may have some connection to Pantheon. Dumas sends Case to the top of a tower to spy on Yannick, and after they confirm the Pantheon is involved in some way with the Avalon crime family, Case takes out the target and meets with Dumas face to face, as they plan to hit the remaining members of the Avalon crime family that same night. Wait for my signal, not before. You CIA types are all the same. And this one? <laughs> Troublemaker. What's going on in there? We have a visitor. Walked right into the lion's den. Alone. Uninvited. Maybe this one works for a rival, huh? Or maybe Pantheon is trying to squeeze us. We came to you, Isaini. We'll learn the truth one way. <laughs> or another. Go ahead. Well, look at that. You're a long way from home, Case. This man is extremely dangerous. Kill him immediately. Aminato. Case and Dumas chase after the kingpin and eventually blow up his limo as he tries to escape. Dumas agrees to head back to the team's safe house, the Rook, and work alongside them as they look to find the truth behind Pantheon, who they now can confirm involves dirty CIA operatives. Back at the Rook, Marshall also found Felix Newman, who hacked into the CIA's network and found the location of Russell Adler, which was located underneath the Capitol Station in Washington, D.C., in a top-secret CIA black site that very few people knew about. Marshall and the team began to game plan for their operation to get Adler back. The black side holding Adler is secured by a retinal scan. We won't have access, at least not anymore. We have an opportunity though if we move fast. This Saturday night, the station is hosting a political event. Take it, Felix. Interestingly, one of the event's attendees, a Senator Jack McKenna, has security clearance to the black site. We only need a high-resolution image of his eyes to get past the retinal scanner. I'm working on something for that. So we're gonna show up to this fundraiser, get what we need from the senator, then grab Adler from the black site before anyone knows what's happened. Case heads inside the party and finds the senator. He gets a scan of his eye and meets with Marshall, and the two break into the black site to find Adler. But they find that the black site was already compromised by Pantheon, who look to find Adler and kill him. Marshall and Case get to Adler first, and they make an escape out of the black site, and eventually out of DC. This is Arrow. It was enough. Try. They hit the place before we got through the door, tore it apart. Jesus, Troy, you're talking about Capitol Station? It is all hands on deck here. What the hell happened? We busted Adler out. You broke into a CIA black site to free Russell Adler. Are you out of your mind? Something's going on, Jane. Something big. Okay, Adler was right. The agency is compromised. You sure it's not Adler? No, but the guys that hit the black site, they weren't friends of his. What guys? It was the Pantheon. Same group that showed up out of nowhere in Kuwait. There's no way that they can know about the black site unless someone inside the CIA is feeding them intel. Someone high up. Is it Livingston? Maybe. Listen, Troy. They are pinning the attack on you, all of you. Woods, Case, Adler. You're on Interpol's most wanted list. Red notices all around. Yeah, I got the picture. I can help. No, I bet if you're insulated from the blowback. Spare me tonight in shining armor shit, Troy. You want to help? Keep digging. Look into Livingston. Okay, let me see what I can do. Thanks. And Jane. Yeah. 
Don't trust anyone. Once back at the Rook, Adler and Woods catch up, and Marshall lets Adler know who's in charge. Hey. Yeah. Listen, I understand that in your own Adler-ass way, you invited us to this place. Maybe you've got squatters' rights, but don't much care. You got a point? What I do care about, what I need you to understand, is that this here is my team. You need us more than we need you, okay? We broke you out of that black site, and I just need an excuse to send you back. Bottom line, you're a stranger to me. All I got on you is your reputation, and it ain't all roses, Adler. Well, you don't have to trust me, Marshal. But it might be best if you do for you and your team. I'll be the judge of that. The team need to enter a palace belonging to Saddam Hussein in Iraq during Operation Desert Storm. Adler and Marshall believe that below Saddam's palace, there could be a lead to Pantheon and who is behind it. However, the Special Air Service has marked the palace for destruction. Adler reached out to Helen Park, who got the Special Air Service to delay the bombing of the palace in exchange for Marshall and his team's help in destroying mobile Scud launchers located there in Iraq. Helen Park assists the team in taking out the mobile Scud launchers, and after this, Marshall, Adler, and Case head into Saddam's palace to look for anything that could be useful to the team, and they find a sample of a biochemical weapon created by a Russian named Gusev. However, when Case heard the name of the bioweapon, his mind was once again rattled for a split second. What do we got? The cradle. Pantheon has a goddamn biological weapon. And they put this in Saddam's hands too? A sample of it, based on what I'm seeing in here. What'd you find? A disc. Some notes, all in Russian. The project's headed by Matvi Gusev. Sounds like you know him. I recognize the name. Gusev was a scientist in the Soviet Union's biological weapons program, Biopreparat. Intelligence had him fleeing Russia last year. Then he vanished. Gusev gave the Pantheon a Soviet bioweapon? No. According to this, the cradle came from somewhere else. A research facility I'm familiar with. It's American. America. All right, visiting time's over, you three. We need your help up here. The team is interrupted by a heavy force of Pantheon operatives. They fight their way out and eventually exfil back to the Rook. Once there, Newman begins to decipher the disc they uncovered in Iraq, while Adler begins to find the location of Gusev, and Marshall, Dumas, and Case head to a research facility in Kentucky, where Adler believes that the cradle was made. Once inside the facility, Marshall and Dumas get separated from Case after a faulty ladder broke, and Case inhaled some sort of hallucinogen smoke which caused him to see disturbing things like mannequins moving and he began to see undead humans, almost zombie-like. Case heard Marshall through comms for a split second before communication was cut off completely. Case began to look for a way out and head back to the main floor, but the longer he inhaled the smoke, the more he began to lose a sense of reality. Case makes it to what looks like the main room with an elevator. However, the elevator is locked and he must find four cards to activate the elevator. While on this hunt for the key cards, Case begins to hear the voice of a woman in his mind. Don't worry, the cradle can't hurt us anymore. We're special special since we first experienced the cradle. Here we find the logo of what seems like Pantheon, and we see that Case has this logo tattooed on his left wrist. And we also find out that Case was a test subject at the research facility, and after having a crazy episode of hallucinations that had him fighting mannequins and different zombies, he finally gets all the keys and heads back upstairs. However, the voice in his head tells him that he must never speak of the Cradle program or the Pantheon division. Once back upstairs, Marshall and Dumas get to Case and calm him down as the toxic gas finally leaves his mind. The team find out out that a large amount of the toxin has been moved and with this info the team returns to the rook where unpleasant news awaits hey some you should see no popcorn i'm serious well, you got my attention <laughs> You cracked the disc. Indeed. No, 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 no. You must make sure that... Yes, you have it.
Ready, Dr. Gusev? Recording. This subject 18 has been infected with the cradle. She's now in proximity to our control subject. Transmission should occur momentarily. It's a biological weapon. You know this already. Keep watching. this time? Faster, yes. And more aggressive, as requested. Wonderful. Isn't that your friend? Harold? You did now. Apparently so. Turn it off. I still have a few more minutes. I said turn it off! After things calmed down, Newman informed the team that he had also found references to a casino in Avalon, where he believes that Pantheon were laundering money through the casino. There is also a safety deposit box below the casino numbered B24, where the team believes there may be information that leads them to Gusev. The team's plan goes perfectly, and Case retrieves a dossier from the deposit box. Once back at the Rook, the team discover what the dossier contained. Adler would inform the team that Gusev was headed to an airport in Kuwait to flee. However, Marshall reminded Adler that the Kuwait airport was a war zone, but Adler had a connection in CENTCOM that might provide some assistance in capturing Gusev. With this, the team head to Kuwait to apprehend the scientists behind the cradle and Pantheon's operations. Yeah, 0900. Captain Sims. Not now. Figured if I stuck around hell long enough, I'd see the devil. How's he look? Not what I expected. I left Langley because of you. Remember that, don't you? Central Command, huh? It's above the table. Unambiguous. Maybe you should give it a try. I don't know, it's a little late for me. So can you get us to Gusev? I can get you close, but Doc, this is it for me. I'm on a different path now. Once you get what you need, I'm out. It's the second time I've heard that this week. Lord, give me strength. Get your crew. You leave them five. Adler, Sims, and Case head into the airport to find Gusev, and after taking out a hefty amount of enemies, they reach the plane Gusev was supposed to be on. But it was just a distraction, and Gusev was boarding another plane across the airport. The trio head across the tarmac and hijack a tank, which helps them in stopping Gusev before his plane takes off. We gotta go! Come on! <sighs> You're a hard man to find, Gusev. It's high time we had a chat! Please! The Pantheon forced me to help them! They threatened my family! You buying that, Sims? No. Case probably came with the what? It's a good thing we brought a lie detector. Ah! Ah! Case, make him talk. I don't know! Why would they tell me? You're lying. No! I swear it! They don't share anything unless they need to! Ah! Ah! Case! Jane Harrow brought me a biological agent, the cradle, from an American lab. The Pantheon wanted me to make it infectious, more violent. The victims tear each other apart. 
Like animals. Who else is working with Harrow? Daniel Livingston? Never heard of him. I told you I don't know! I don't! Please, you must believe me! Pull the plug, Case. No! No! Stop! I don't know the target, but I can tell you where the weapon is! Keep talking. For Kuta. For me. Russian prison camp. It became a bioweapon lab years ago, before it was shut down. But it still has what they need to scale up production of the cradle. That'll work. You can dispose of them now. What? No! <laughs> no! He told us what he knows. You're getting soft in your old age, huh, Sims? You've got your ways and I've got mine. Gustav's in my custody now. Marshal, you catch all that? Affirmative. Mother loads in Borkuda. I'll let the others know we're headed there. The cradle leaves that camp. The Pantheon can release it any time, anywhere. Millions could be at risk. It's up to us. With the revelation that the cradle was in Vorkuta, the team sent in Dumas to infiltrate the prison and destroy its defenses to allow for the rest of them to head inside. Dumas also takes control of the cameras underneath the prison and finds out that Jane Harrow is right below them. Yesterday morning, Commander. There's really not enough time to completely... Time? Yes. The risk of contempt... I will determine the risks. Commander, if we... Is that... We've done what we came here to do. The weapon has shipped. Now we evacuate before the CIA or the Soviets learn we're here. Clear enough? Yes, ma'am. We may already be compromised if the chaos around this camp is any indication. Come with me. Bad news, Marshal. Say it on me. They moved the weapon. Haro confirmed it herself. Jane's here? Now? Just saw her on the security feed. In some lab. Probably underground. Jesus. All right, new plan. We're not leaving empty-handed. We wreck this place, grab Harrow unharmed. I've got a few questions. I'll find a way on the ground. The team enter the prison and take out the Pantheon operators, and they push to capture Jane before she can escape. Jane tries to convince Marshall to let it go and to join her, which he rejects. Marshall and Dumas then split away from Case to find Jane quicker. However, Case is ambushed by Jane and Pantheon. We keep bumping into each other, don't we, Case? I take it Dr. Goose pointed you here. I knew he would eventually let us down. <laughs> But unusual circumstances make for unusual bedfellows. I'm sure you're well aware of that by now. I respect you, Case. I really do. You put everything into your work, your principles. You may not believe it anymore, but I am too. It's all just about perspective. The principles. <laughs> You're not that naive. Blind faith will only take you so far. They would kill each one of you given the open shot. We both betrayed our masters, haven't we? <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> take me, kill me, Troy. There's nothing you can do to stop this. You know I hate being told what I can't do. Felix, get ready. We're headed back to the Rook with the guest. With Jane in their custody, Marshall and Adler interrogate her for what she knows, but she does not break. However, the two find a tracker embedded in her arm, which means that Pantheon will be at the Rook soon. Adler says that he knows a way to make Jane talk. He still has some of the MK Ultra in his possession, and he believes injecting Jane with it will get her to open up before Pantheon arrives. The team set up their defenses at the Rook and prepare Jane for Adler. Once Jane is injected with the MK Ultra, she is in a battle with herself against her own mind, and she begins to open up about things that she kept buried and hidden from everyone, including Marshall. During this, she reveals why she joined the CIA and what happened to her parents. Jane's parents were also CIA, and on September 12, 1960, they were assassinated in their own home by the CIA, who then covered up the murder as a home invasion gone wrong. However, Jane witnessed it with her own eyes and saw a man that murdered her parents. Jane dedicated herself to the CIA so that she could reach high enough levels and finally find out what happened to her parents. Eventually, she found out that the order to kill came from Emerson Black, 
It is assumed that Pantheon were the ones who told Jane what happened, and they also revealed that Russell Adler was the operator that killed her parents. Target's eliminated. Anything else? Negative. We're done here. However, Woods tried to convince Jane that Pantheon took advantage of her and her weaknesses and planted in her mind that it was Adler that did it. This casted some doubt in Jane's mind, and she began to doubt the truth that she thought she knew. How do you know someone else didn't kill your parents? They could have been the goddamn Pantheon themselves. You were a kid. Can you really trust your own memories? Target's eliminated. It was. How can you be so sure? Target's eliminated. I know it was. It wasn't Adler. Jane reveals to Woods that Pantheon wants to take over the United States government and become the only superpower in the world. Eventually, Jane breaks and reveals to Woods that Pantheon planned to release the biochemical weapon, the Cradle, in Washington, D.C., in the Capitol building. Woods informs Marshall of this and lets him know that he contacted Livingston to tell him to clear everyone out. During this, Woods is ambushed by Pantheon, who makes it inside the Rook to free Jane. Oh, damn it! Oh. Uh. I want him alive. I'm so sad to see you like this, Woods. You try so hard. <laughs> You just don't matter anymore. Fuck you! I'll give the order once we're airborne. Don't worry. Your suffering will be over soon. Marshall and Case find Woods, who tells them to go after Jane. Marshall is able to hit her in the arm with a sniper, but an RPG hits near him and he gets his leg caught between a wall. Case must go on alone to stop Jane and Pantheon. Case makes his way to the chopper and fights Harrow to the death. Oh, for God's sake! I shouldn't have protected any of you! I pushed Livingston for your suspension! I wanted you out of the way! You really are, Case. The cradle made you this. Fool. You owe everything to the Pantheon. Destroyer. The cradle. Again. Okay.
It's over. We did it, Case. We did it. Two weeks later, Livingston calls a meeting with Marshall and his team. Thanks for coming. You getting medals or concrete boots? Neither. But I can start with an apology. Damn straight. I'm not sure how you pulled it off, but it's not lost on me that you prevented one of the greatest catastrophes of our time. So you want us back? Something like that. Can we trust one another? Working on it. Right now you have something of great value. Anonymity. You're in the shadows. No shit. We've always been in the shadows. Not like this. Your reach is greater than it's ever been. We need you, Woods. All of you. That can provide whatever you need. Accommodations, resources, cash, additional manpower. All of it off the books. I thought the Cold War was over. No more need for, uh, what was it? Global gunslingers. Yes. The Cold War may be over, but the world is more dangerous than it's ever been. The nature of our enemy is unclear now. What do you want us to do about it? What you've always done. Protect us. Harrow may be gone, but not the Pantheon. I need you back in Avalon. You think you're still a threat? I do. And worse. Whatever Cabal brought Harrow into the Pantheon, still lives inside our house. We thought they were long gone. But it turns out, they never left. In the end, we see that Pantheon is still within the CIA. And although Harrow has died, Pantheon is still working their plan. And the man that we see at the end of the game, who is in Livingston's office, is the typewriter who appeared in the first mission of the game, during the debrief. The camera cuts to him quickly after Harrow asks to see Marshall in her office. That man is key as he may be the face behind Pantheon. We never get a name or anything of significance from him. The game has no post credit scene either. But if Cold War is any indication of how this game will go, then Warzone may continue the story and maybe even provide closure as the ending of the game and many other story threads seem to be left wide open. Quickly, I would like to add that I didn't cover the minor things that didn't seem to move the story forward, but I can tell you that Woods believes that it was Jane Harrow who betrayed them in Panama, and he believes that she had contact with Raul Menendez. Adler also let Case know that he began to hunt down Pantheon due to a conversation that he had with Hudson shortly before his death, which Adler implied that Hudson was the one who uncovered Pantheon first and was going to begin an investigation against them. With all that said, this has been the story of Black Ops 6 so far.